I'm my name is Jim Kai Hao and uh usually just call me Kai Hao. I'm from Malaysia and currently I'm uh Secretary General of uh Malaysian Young Graduates Association and also advisor of Phoenix Foundation. Uh I graduated with a law degree from the National University of Malaysia and I am also a qualified lawyer but I'm not practicing. Now I'm uh, working as an administrative and diplomatic officer in the federal government of Malaysia. So nice to meet you all. Young Graduate Association is a, a registered uh, youth NGO in Malaysia where our mission is to encourage uh, young community with knowledge and also passion to use their knowledge uh, to contribute to the society and also building a better campus uh, to uh, for our future generation. Uh, what activities we normally do is we have three um, main and core activities. First is uh, we call it Graduates uh, Paper Plan Awards. It's an award to recognize efforts of students in uh, university uh, in making efforts to organize programs or whatever um, activities in a creative way and innovative way. So um, the second one is we call it Great Plus uh, Workshop. It's a workshop um, organized by our organization where we invite um, seniors uh, and also uh, working adults, working prof professional, to go back to their university to share their real life experience and also stories to their juniors and students uh, who are currently studying in the campus. And the third one is a uh, graduate international uh, graduate international university cultural camp, which is now ongoing. Uh, is a uh, it pre before the COVID-19 uh, um, incidents, we, we organized in a way in a form of uh, uh, camps. It's a camp uh, for three, four days, three nights, where we gather all the university student leaders from Malaysia to um, together and discuss about their future direction of their programs normally is uh, more on Chinese culture where we emphasize the preservation and also promotion of Chinese culture to other communities in Malaysia and also it serves as a platform of Malaysian young uh, Chinese youth to, um, also, uh, to, to form a, a great coalition to voice up their concern and also their views on national issue and community issues. So uh, these are the basic introduction of uh, Malaysia Young Graduate Association in a simple uh, form is we call it grad ones. And uh, yeah, this is uh, some of our core programs and also mission of our NGO. <music> Need to do this is that, um, I was inspired and also motivated by other leaders which are, who are senior leaders of mine. Uh, they are more senior than me. Because during my growing, uh, the journey of growing up, um, the journey of my study, in, whether in secondary school or university or after I graduated and joined the, the workplace, um, I have received a lot of guidance and assistance from the seniors leaders, the, the young, the young community leaders, where they give me a lot of uh, uh, sharing, and also when we face um, a lot of challenges during in our life, they always uh, come and give us uh, advice and um, guide us on how to overcome it. So uh, I realize it's really challenging when you are alone in your journey. So you need people, you need friends, you need accompaniments, you need uh, seniors to guide you. So uh, when I graduated, I feel like um, I benefit a lot from NGOs, from my uh, university student association, 
So I realized we need to do something for, for our younger generation. That's why I, when I received the invitation to join Grad 1 and serve as a Secretary General, I do not hesitate and I straight away uh, uh, accept the invitation because I want to contribute my experience and my knowledge and my thinking um, to the younger generation to ensure they are better than us. To ensure when they are pursuing their dreams, they do not um, mislead or they do not feel helpless. Uh, because when they feel demotivated, they might give up their dreams. So by this way, we actually nurture and produce more uh, capable leaders than in a, in a longer term, we can shape a better society. So this is, uh, this has motivated me to continue to do this. And I also uh, feel very um, inspired and I feel motivated when I see the success stories of our, our, our members. So this keeps me, even though I have also challenges during this, uh, when, when I was involved in this kind of NGO or uh, organizing programs a lot of, because nowadays we, we are working, we still have to contribute, we have to spend some time in NGOs. Um, but what makes me moving forward is that the, the satisfaction and also the joy when you're seeing people success, being successful in their life. Time commitment and also uh, financial resources are always uh, very challenging situate, uh, a very big challenges to NGOs in Malaysia because in Malaysia, I, um, it's still not easy for NGO to receive donation or any financial assistance from the government and also from the com uh, private company. So, but uh, luckily we have uh, very successful entrepreneurs who they themselves are from NGOs. They realize we need uh, some sort of uh, this kind of mechanism. You have NGO mechanism to uh, help the society. You have private companies to drive the economic growth. But in order for social growth, you need NGO to do it, to, to drive it. Then, uh, but so that's why uh, in, in some way we manage to uh, sustain some of our programs uh, uh, based on their, it's more to personal connection and our um, engagement with them. Then they feel, uh, uh, they feel confidence and also inspired by our efforts. Then they feel like, okay, let, we, we, we have to help the youth NGO. If nobody is going to help the youth, who, are, who is going to help it? So they just, uh, make some little contribution to uh, for us to organize programs to, to sustain our our mission and for personal commitment because most of our members I know actually all of our members are committee members are working adults means the graduate uh, the uh, so uh, uh, and most of them are professional so when uh, they are professional sometimes uh, is uh, challenging for them to squeeze their time to, to uh, spend, to, to join, to give efforts in, especially when you are organizing programs. Uh, how you overcome it is, uh, we have quite a number of committee members and when everyone share the responsibility, then it makes the things uh, easier. And we also receive a, a, a system from undergraduates, even though they are not graduated, but they feel like, yes, hey, I want to learn. Yeah, they give me something to do, then I will help you maybe on the setting up or the, uh, maybe it's a, more on the human resources when during the event day you need uh, helpers, then you just come and join us. We are more to the, on the planning, uh, the, the stage of planning. And when it comes to the execution, we always get, we, we, are, we are fortunate to get a lot of help from the undergraduates. So mm -hmm. that is how we, we, what we are facing and how we overcome it. I, actually, I was from a very 
small I was from a I'm from a small city. It's not I'm not growing up in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. So the exposure is very limited. But uh during my childhood and also my uh, study time in secondary school, I have I had the aspiration to become a leader. But sometimes I I question myself whether I can do it. Mm. Yeah, it's always a question in my mind. Uh, until I I make it, it's always that I doubt myself whether I can do it. Is yeah, but I I have the determination because uh I I think because uh when I was a little kid, I read a lot of uh books or stories about uh our world leaders like um uh, Doctor Sun Yat Sen mm. and our Prime Minister Doctor Mahathir. So. I I from these kinds of uh knowledge sharing and these kinds of uh written stories, I feel like quite a lot of people, even though they are not born in a very privileged uh background, but they manage to do something different. So when before I I I came to university, I have the aspiration. I tell myself, uh. Yeah, maybe now is not the time for you to do what you want. But never mind. Then we, we what we can do is study well, then we see what will happen in the future. Uh I foresee, actually I foresee mm. myself I can do it. Uh because I know I know from the stories, I know from the sharing, many people can do it. So that is the power of sharing. Uh then and I know they can do it. Then I started to see what they did in their life in order to success, to be successful. Even though a lot of challenges, but because we are determined that we have a dream that are uh, that is achievable, even have we have a lot of uh, obstacles in front of you, but you say, yeah, let's face it and go through it. If eventually, I I think I can reach the this destination I want. To. President of Malaysia Young Graduate Association. He actually uh, very concerned about our university students because uh, they know that yeah how is my graduation whether I can make it on time. So he is a very powerful man and he actually uh, sent an invitation to our higher education minister who is in charge of university. Uh, affairs in Malaysia and make a first time ever we use Zoom. Oh. We are the first one using Zoom application to organize a direct face to face meeting uh, between university students and the higher education minister. And everything uh, explained is explained by the minister. Minister uh, assure the students. If let's say you are stuck in the university because you cannot be, you are not allowed to go back to your hometown or you go even you are not allowed to go out from your campus. But never mind, our ministry is taking care of you. You can stay in your hostel. Then the university or all the public university, uh, they are allocating certain fund, emergency fund to give. Uh, food assistance to our students because uh, some of them cannot go out from the campus. Then how and you don't have any cooking equipments in your room. Then how are you going to settle yourself? Then never mind. Everything is covered. Uh, you can still you can study in your your room. Then you get food from our uh, the university. And the minister also explained what. Is the change? What are the expected changes on our higher education learning during this uh, pandemic, COVID nineteen pandemic, and assure that your lecture will be you will be going on. Then you ensure your you will graduate in time. And if, let's say you have internship upcoming internship uh, to be uh, done. Then we see how we, you uh, university. You will negotiate with the the employee the the in the the place providing internship, uh, 
how to reschedule or how to rearrange the content. Then, uh, of course, the student have a lot of uh, questions. Then they can direct the questions to the minister. Then the minister will took take it, uh, note it down, and she and she answer the questions uh, immediately to the students. Wow. Then after that, yeah, because the participants are very limited because you have only Zoom, you, and but we still publish it on our page live. So oh. there are quite a number of students join it. Then after that, we also make a press statement about this meeting to to publish uh, to be published on a local Chinese media, uh, so that uh, our students are uh, they know what is actually happening in. Uh, the ministry and university, then there, then there will be no so, such a speculation about uh, the what is go, going to happen in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So we also, uh, from time to time, we send our, what we have received from the students, the requests or the concerns to the, the ministry so that they are, they are, uh, up, they are updating what is happening in the university so they can resolve it uh, immediately. So that is uh, one of the uh, actions we have taken to, to, to actually assure, to, to make sure they, are, they don't feel panic. Yeah, everything's mm -hmm. still going on. Yeah, stay calm, stay in your room. Yeah, that is uh, one of the things we have done. And uh, secondly, we also organize, we have organized quite a, a number of forums in on several topics, uh, first is uh, I, I can remember some of it, uh, uh, which are you know how you manage your study life in university. Then what how and I also uh, asked my friend who is working in HR recruitment. Then uh, and we invited her to give a talk on what is going on on HR human resources market during this uh, pandemic or after the pandemic. Uh, then from there, the university student can know that oh, it's actually not affected much, even though the yeah we, job opportunities are reducing. But she she also told uh, told the student that well actually quite a lot of uh, some some of the companies they don't reduce they do not reduce the number of uh, job opportunities. Uh -huh. They are prepared uh, to face any uncertainty in upcoming uh. uh Time. So, yeah, this is some, and also personally, we have also uh, met. Sometimes we we met with uh, our juniors in university. We will try to see what is actually happening in the university. So, but we will still giving them a lot of en encouragement. You can do whatever you want. Uh, programs still going on, but in another form, so that um, at least they feel that uh. It's, uh, it's not that bad as we imagine. We can mm. overcome it. Mm. So there's some um, little efforts to, to um, we call it uh, to neutralize the impact of uh, this COVID nineteen pandemic. Mm -hmm. so, and also the doubt in 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 your inner self. Mm. Uh, I also faces some challenges in the real life. Where because I men I mentioned I was going out in a small city, and during that time we don't have we didn't have any smartphone, and I don't I didn't have internet connection in my in my home. Oh. Uh, I I only have a small TV. It's a cable. It's not a cable TV. It's a public television station. Uh, uh on. It's really limited because uh, you don't have the cable TV where you can access to other channels in the world. And it's because we also don't have a big bookstore in the, in the city. So it's very hard for me to get uh, other books other than uh, the reference book or the, 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 the books required in schools. It's like uh, when you want to learn more, it's... In, in a simple term is you, I have a very limited access to information and knowledge, but never mind. Uh, mm -hmm. We still have newspaper, we have uh, TVs, then every day I watch TV and mm -hmm. get especially TV news and 
I watched Hong Kong drama. I oh. watched a, a Taiwan drama and the mainland dramas to know what is actually happening outside the world. And from there, I aspire and I feel like one day I want to explore. Then, yeah, I make it <laughs> because I visited to Hong Kong and yeah, get to know what is, how is actually Hong Kong. It's a dream years ago. Now, uh, I have achieved it. Yeah, in a, in a way, is I think the biggest uh, uh, challenge in, during my, my teenager time, teenage time is uh, the access to knowledge is very limited compared to uh, now, compared to now, yeah. Mm. So it limited my, my, my level of, uh, my level of knowledge uh, to, mm. to fully utilize the time to study. But never mind, we pick up later. Uh, three E and three ships. Endure hardship, embrace leadership, and establish championship. Ah, I hope that we go through the hardship and we upgrade ourselves. We be a leaders of our life. We lead our life to establish a championship all your life. So this is why I want to share about my quote of. Music.